Hello, and welcome to the Racken Digital Rebar Lab 2020. In this lab, we're going to be notifying Slack when alerts arrive. It's important that you have accomplished the prerequisite labs so that you're used to using events and building the system. The other thing that you'll need to do in this lab is you will need to follow the documentation in Slack and have an application set up. We've created this handy link and I'm going to show you briefly how to set this up so that you'll be ready to go. If you are an administrator for Slack, and you, you must be, you're going to go ahead and go into Customize Applications and build a new application here. So this allows me to create a new app. You'll see that I already have one built, and that's the one we're going to be leveraging here. And when I create a new app, it's going to let me uh, make some basic choices here to configure the UI scopes and things like that. We're not going to work through all of these components, but it does let you choose the name of the app and the workspace and things like that. We're going to be using the one I've already built, and I'm going to leave you and the Slack documentation to figure out how to get to a point where you have a very simple posting uh, system. And once you've done that, you're ready to begin the uh, system of actually orchestrating this and building it up. One of the things I do recommend and is very easy to do is go ahead and also, uh, if you're used to it and have already done the CLI uh, system, you should be able to just go ahead and uh, do all of these steps via Slack. In this case, I've already got my Slack URL pieces, so I'm going to follow the instructions. Easily switching into modal view. And here I just have to add a parameter called the Slack service. URL. Excellent. This is a encrypted parameter, so I'm going to need to decrypt it and drop in my parameter. You'll notice it is set in uh, encrypted mode, so the system's ready for that. Uh, and we are good to go. I've now added my Slack URL. This is custom per your app. And you might have multiple apps, multiple pipelines, multiple workspaces. You need one of these for each one. Uh, here I'm setting it globally because I just have one. If you have uh, a dedicated one, you can just add it to the trigger or blueprint or a profile and make it available in that way. So we're going to go ahead and set up our blueprint here. Here's my blueprints. Go ahead and create that blueprint. Name it Lab 2020. It's good. As always, I like to uh, set my... Let's see, we actually can type Slack here for the icon. Excellent. So I've saved that and now I need to go in and actually add in this Slack app webhook task. Very easy to do. These are all built-in commands. Perfect. That's already added. And then I need a trigger to run the blueprint. Let's go ahead and go over to triggers. And here I'm going to create a trigger again called Lab 2020. And I'm going to go, I'm going to make this a event trigger. Perfect. And the blueprint I want to run is Lab 2020, the one I just created. I'll let that run on the local self runner. And then I want to match the alerts.create.star alert. So now anytime alert is created, this event will fire, and that will call this blueprint and then run my uh, Slack create system. Once again, we're going to stick with our theme, make this Slack. And now we can go to the alerts view. Make sure that all of our alerts are, are good. And from the alert, we're going to create a lab 2020 alert. I'll set it to info and I'm going to hit save. So when I do this, you can't see it. Uh, my Slack just chimed. So now I've got an alert from my Slack telling me that I have a message from digital rebar and giving me the name of the endpoint. That looks excellent. So now, if I want to, I can uh, observe exactly what happened when I did this work. And 
if I want, I can also simulate alerts because I, in my previous lab, lab 2010 dev, actually created a alerts UX trigger. Very handy. These labs do build on themselves. And if I check here, I can look at this work order and see exactly what actions were taken uh, for my system. In this case, it's just showing you basically that there was a curl message uh, going in that system. I don't want to uh, jump into, if I jump into the task over here, you'll see the exact same message. I could cruise over to template and see exactly the code that was done, which would include the URL that I posted to, so my, my Slack application. I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't want to expose that path to everybody. Uh, but you'll notice that we have we are creating this work order, very straightforward. If we go back into the 2020 trigger, we can actually get a little bit fancier. Right now, I'm just displaying the default message, which says message from digital rebar. But what I'd like to be able to do is get a little bit fancier and use some of the data from the system. So to do that, I'm going to merge the data so I can get the alert date, uh, alert information. Then I'm going to customize the message. So I have to go into the work order profiles here and include my Slack message. This lets me override the default message. And you'll see this is the text that I have coming in by default. It's just telling me message from digital rebar and then providing a uh, DRP uh, injection API URL, which is which is fine, but I actually want to use a little bit more sophisticated thing. I'm going to use the level of the of the alert, the name of the alert, and then that API URL. So I'm just going to paste this right in from the lab. That looks great. Hit enter and save it. So now when I come back over into the alerts view, I'm going to acknowledge this, these two alerts so I, I can sub submit them again. Say lab 2020. Uh, leave it, at, I'll set it at warn this time. Info would be fine too. Say go. And now my alert actually tells me that I got a warning from lab 2020 from digital rebar endpoint. So I get more information. Actually, it was able to dynamically customize what information got sent into Slack from digital rebar. This is really handy if I wanted to make sure that every time an alert was generated, uh, say for Terraform Drift, we have a lab for that, or Amazon, um, discovering systems that you weren't aware of. Once again, we have a lab for that. Um, if uh, those alerts fired, then I would be able to subscribe to them and push them directly into Slack. So I wouldn't have to watch the digital rebar, actually take alerts and rebroadcast them into another system. Super easy and, and incredibly powerful. And with that, we have been able to complete this task. Anytime I have alerts in this digital rebar endpoint now, I'm going to automatically be notified in my Slack system. Um, and that is a tremendous benefit to being able to get real time uh, alerts out of your operation system, even when you're not logged in. Hope this is helpful. We have uh, quite a number of alerts. This ends this sort of chain on them, but it's, it's easy from here to go in learning how to build your own blueprints or add triggers to the system incredibly powerful capabilities uh, in Digital Rebar, and uh, the labs make it really easy to walk through and learn about them.